Real Country 1430 AM and 107.3 FM WRDN. I'm Brian Winnikins as we continue our spotlight of the Berglund Farm uh, in Dallas in southern Barron County. Thank you to uh, Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin for supporting our uh, Dairy Farm family spotlights. And Sam joins us once again. We're going to learn a little bit about uh, the milking operation, where the milk goes, and uh, how they protect the milk as well for uh, everyone to use. And Sam, thanks for joining us. Okay, you have the 50 cows. How long you, you milk, what, two, three times a day? We're twice a day milking here. Okay, so morning and uh, evening, traditional, just like on my uncle's uh, farm in New Franken, Wisconsin, when I was a kid. So tell us how the farm protects the milk before you ship it out. Well, the, the main way is um, it has to get cold. Uh, so once it gets in the bulk tank, it has to get below 38 degrees within two hours of milking time. Okay, and it's stored in that uh, bulk tank now. How often is it picked up? So we get picked up every other day. Okay, and where does the milk go? So we ship to DFA, and DFA used to have a plant in Bloomer. That's where our milk went for, well, from the probably from the 50s up until the early 90s. And uh, after that plant closed, DFA uh, ships the milk where it's needed. Um, right now, it's usually going to AMPI and Jim Falls. Um, occasionally it'll go into St. Paul for bottling. And so some of that milk ends up as cheese and or bottled milk that could actually end up in the Twin Cities school districts, right? Well, not just the Twin Cities school districts. Uh, uh, that's a large bottling plant at Kemp's there. So anytime you get Kemp's milk, there's a chance it came from here. And, and as a dairy farmer, when you're at the store, you see that. You see either the, the Kemp's milk or even cheese that's that's and butter that's made from the Jim Falls plant that's it's got to give you a little bit of pride oh absolutely and it's important to have you know pride in your own work and you know we want to have the highest quality product we can and uh it goes to the best quality place and that's the other the, that that quality part of it as well you have to also watch all of the cows because it, cows do get sick Everybody gets sick. Everything gets sick. So when a cow is sick, you have to take that cow out of the rotation, don't you? Oh, absolutely. Any any cow that uh, gets mastitis, that milk is discarded. And and so for that the the health do do you and Brittany do you monitor that, or you have a veterinarian come in so so many times a year or so many times a month? Well, it's a combination of both. We're uh, Brittany and I are the main milkers you know throughout the year we get a, occasionally get a vacation you know a couple of days here there but uh, you know we pay close attention to that and uh, so if our milk was picked up on a Thursday um, usually by Friday night we get a report that says you know this was the how much butter fat was in your milk how much protein um, what was the somatic cell count um, that's usually the the first indication of uh, if a cow is getting sick is that somatic cell count and that and then and then that's when the veterinarian comes out and kind of looks things over well that's uh you know we consult with the vet on that our vet is usually out once every six weeks um checking for pregnancies in the cows but if uh you know the mastitis and the milk quality portions that's stuff that uh you know between the the learning on the job and the um you know learning through the different avenues that are uh presented so the the vet has uh antibiotics available if we need them for the cows and it's right on the label how we have to administer it and how long a cow cannot have her milk go into the pipeline again that's the other part of it again cow gets sick okay we have to treat that that cow while it's being treated is not part of the milking routine in the morning and the afternoon that's right and every load of milk is tested um if I remember the right number from a few years ago, between the time it leaves my farm and shows up on the shelf in the store, I believe it's tested 17 times. And, uh, you know, that it's something that uh, it occasionally happens that uh, some someone makes a mistake on a farm and uh, accidentally one of those cows that had the antibiotics, um, it gets into the into the milk and it's uh, it's an expensive deal because... Because that milk out of that whole tanker truck, the entire tanker truck, is dumped then. All of it. That's right. Every So if it started with a small truck and it went to a, 
uh, a plant that had, you know, 20 trucks worth of milk in it, if it got in with the other 20, that's all has to get dumped. And then uh, the farmer who may have made the mistake, they're the one that pays for it. Or usually that's uh, something an insurance policy ends up covering. Talking with uh, Sam Berglund uh, this morning, or Sam Olson, uh, rather. He's fifth-generation farmer here at Berglund Farms. I guess well, I'll, I'll switch a little bit with with the fields, very rolling fields out here. And yes, you have a little bit heavier soil, but what are some of the things you're doing to protect that soil? Yeah, you know, you only get the soil you get. And uh, so many years ago, you know, my folks worked with the NRCS office to, you know, which fields are highly erodible and partly erodible. When they started, I, mom had a color coded map of every field and I think she started out with seven or eight different colors and uh, eventually the between the crop rotations and uh, the, it, it was simplified down to three colors so now we have there's only a couple of the, the red fields those are the highly erodible and uh, those always have to have a, a good you know whether it be a stubble or grass or something on it to make sure the soil the soil stays where it's supposed to and any uh, you know nutrients that you know it's that's the manure, the uh, you know political promises of last month that uh, get spread on the fields, and and so that's the other that's the other part of this. Then you do use you do some no till, but you also have started to to work in some cover crops like rye. Yeah, the this area, Southern Barron County, we have a lot of farmers who are uh, have been willing to try the the new techniques with the cover crops, and I've seen it work, you know, a mile away. So I thought, well, why am I not doing this also? And we can see the benefits. Uh, get You can get out in the field sooner a lot of times because you have that root system that holds the dirt together. You don't sink right away. And and I know this year, because of the weather, it was the, 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 the grasses just kind of took over. But when you first used the rye, you, you actually tried to use some of that too in your feed so you could save yourself a little money? Yeah, that was part of the thought was after corn silage uh, the fall before we got the rye planted and uh, with the mild winter we had it came it ended up coming up even though we planted much too late. But the uh, the hope is we can uh, harvest that rye for feed for the cows and some of the purists will say, oh, it's not a cover crop anymore. Well, you know, it, it's serving the purpose we wanted to, getting that uh, the growing plant above and below the soil. Uh, help hold the soil and nutrients in place and keep it out of the water table. And and the other the other part with rye that I've been been told it's kind of like a natural herbicide. It kind of keeps the dandelions and other stuff down once it starts growing. Yep, rye, I believe the word is allelopathy and uh, that keeps the other uh, keeps the weeds from growing. And again, we're talking with uh, Sam Olson this morning with uh, him and his wife, Brittany, on uh, Berglund Farm. And tomorrow morning on Friday, we're going to have uh, Brittany come back in, talk a little bit about the family and what it's like to uh, raise a family here on the farm and some of the things that the uh, family does off the farm as well. Thank you to Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin for uh, supporting our Dairy Farm Family Spotlights. You're listening to W.